Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting, and I am going to show you how to paint this pumpkin patch sign. So this one is done on a 10 by 20 canvas, so it's one of those long canvas paintings. And I suppose you can do this on a regular 11 by 14 or different size. You can just kind of eliminate the signs or make the sign shorter. I'm going to go over brushes and colors that I used for this. So we will be using a one inch flat brush, a number 12 bright brush, and a number four round brush. So only three brushes for this, but a bunch of colors. And this one can be customized because the signs are colorful. So you can change the colors of the signs if you want. We'll be using titanium white, Mars black, primary yellow, cad orange hue, hooker's green hue, raw umber, cerulean blue, light pink, and deep violet. If you're drawing this with me, you'll need a pencil and a ruler, and there is a template download for this if you want to use the traceable instead. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be filming this so that my canvas is going horizontal, but really the, the design is going vertical because of the nature of the camera. It helps to film it mostly horizontal, but I'll be turning it around to kind of help you see where we're going. We are going to start actually by painting the background. I have two colors on my palette. I have cerulean blue and titanium white, and I'm using a one inch flat brush. So I'm gonna grab maybe about three or four parts blue and maybe one part white to kind of lighten that up. And I'm gonna let that blend right on the canvas. So the idea with this background is to do kind of an abstract, kind of expressive strokes, some kind of, flip-flopping my brush in different angles. Maybe I can have fun with it and kind of make it go in a swirled kind of circle direction. But what we want to do is we want to fill up almost the entire canvas with this. We want our sky, so the right side is actually the top of the painting. We want our sky to be a little bit darker at the top and we want it to get lighter and lighter as it goes to the left or the bottom of the canvas. And also, I'm going to intentionally add a little bit more white in the center of this. And by adding white in the center, it's gonna kind of brighten up the center part of our background to allow for some really good contrast with our sign when we paint the sign in later. So I'm adding more of the blue, more of the darker blue at the top, blending it on the canvas, more white towards the center, Blending that and we blend simply by just kind of swirling the paint around on the canvas or kind of flip-flopping the brush and We want to try not to over blend the color. So we have really pretty different variations in that blue We are painting a clear blue fall day sky it might be a little bit windy. In fact, it will be windy because we'll be painting leaves flying around. So by doing that kind of circular strokes, it might create that impression that it is a windy day. I'm just gonna continue down the canvas, or in this case, continue to the left of the canvas. I'm gonna gradually add lighter color as I work my way towards the left, grabbing more white on the brush. And I'm just going to continue this all throughout. So as far as how much space to leave on the bottom, you'll want maybe an inch of space. It's okay if you end up just painting the entire canvas because the blue hill, like there's blue grass on the bottom, that can be painted over. So it's up to you if you wanna leave like an inch space at the bottom or just paint the entire canvas. I'm just gonna keep going with this, gradually adding more white as I head towards the left, towards the bottom. A little bit extra white just in the center of that soft kind of angled strokes. And if you don't like the look of like the choppy strokes and if you wanna smooth them out, you can always just kind of keep working the strokes and keep blending it further and further. And that'll smooth your strokes out a little bit better. Um, if you like the choppy stroke look, you can keep it more choppy. And so occasionally you might get some 
strokes of the darker color where you want the lighter color to be, and that's also okay. I'm gonna go silent here as I finish this step. You might find that you want to go back up here and work some of these colors. Just beware that they might be dry and not workable. So um, I wanted to go up and add some darker on the top and kind of darker on the sides. But fancy see how it's not blending. So you may have to go back and blend in some more white if needed because that's not blending with that white. Or you can just kind of dry brush it and kind of let that darker kind of fade with the rest of the background. So when you're done with the background, so I left about an inch of space at the bottom, you wanna let this dry. So take a break, come back, and get yourself a pencil and a ruler, and we are gonna be drawing this entire sign. So let's start by drawing this hill. I am about two and a half inches over here on the bottom left. And I'm just gonna draw this curved line. It elevates a little bit and goes across the canvas. And then I'm going to draw my post. So this doesn't have to be in the very center of the hill. In fact, mine was actually off center, a little bit more to the left and I'm going to be using my ruler. I'm gonna do a line that is about 14 inches high. This does not have to be exact. If you wanna make your middle pole post higher or shorter, you can. So if you're working on like an 11 by 14 canvas, you, can, you don't have to do that 14 inches high. You can do it maybe 10 inches high, um, whatever seems to work for the height of your canvas and the width of my post is about an inch and a half. Again, doesn't have to be exact. It would be helpful to be using a T-square ruler. I did not grab my T-square, but the T-square helps to make sure your post lines are perpendicular to the edge of the canvas. And then I'm using my ruler to draw two horizontal lines, actually one horizontal line at the top, but then this bottom of the post, I'm actually gonna bring this down a little bit below the top of the hill line. I did a curved line, but actually ended up changing this into more of a three-dimensional rectangle. So if you want to skip what I'm doing now, you can, because it doesn't make a huge difference in the end after we paint this in. But if you want to make it look more like a three-dimensional rectangle, you can do these two kind of diagonal lines at the top and then bring that down with another vertical line that meets at the bottom. The bottom part is going to be disguised by a lot of grass blades. So you don't have to be too detailed with how the bottom looks. And next we're going to draw the four signs. If you're changing this and adding more or less signs, you might want to kind of plan out um, the placement of this. Since we're doing this in pencil, it will erase. So I'm going to start with this, the top sign. And I'm just going to take my ruler and draw a long horizontal line. This sign is going diagonal. So I'm going to take my ruler and do one parallel to that. The height of this sign is about an inch and a half, and the width is about seven and a half. So we can draw the two lines. At first I wanted this to be more like an arrow pointing, but I ended up making this flatter later. So you're gonna decide which way you like if you want it to be an arrow. So this top one's gonna to say pumpkin patch. You turn that into more of a sign and not an arrow. The next three are going to be arrows. So we're gonna use our ruler to kind of plan out the next one below it. So you wanna, the spacing underneath one, underneath this one is about an inch and a half below the top, the top sign. The width of this is about five inches. Um, 
to the right of the arrow, so that rectangle shape to the, or to the left, no, to the right of the arrow piece is five inches and the arrow itself is about an inch and a half. So I'm just using my ruler to draw all these signs and each sign is about an inch and a half tall, about six and a half to seven inches wide. And again, you're welcome to change the angle of these, the shape, you're welcome to change the shape, and you're welcome to change the direction. And then when we start writing in the words on there, you're definitely welcome to change the words too. Lots of customization that can happen with this painting. I'm going in here and changing this into just a rectangle shape instead of an arrow pointing. Go ahead and pause the video if you needed. The drawing portion went a little bit fast there, but take your time as you finish the drawing. There's also a template for this. So if you're struggling with the drawing or don't want to do all the rulers and measuring lines, you can print out the template and transfer that with a piece of graphite paper over your first layer of paint. Next, I'm gonna load my palette with raw umber and titanium white, and I'll be using this 12 bright brush. We are going to paint the center post first, and we'll be using that with dark brown and white. So let's load our 12 bright in brown and white about equal amounts, and we'll be adjusting this color as we go. Um, it's primarily a dark color, brown, although we're going to use the white to make some areas white or lighter uh, just to create that faux wood effect. But for now, I'm going to use mostly the brown and the tip of the brush to outline the edge. If you think this will be easier with painter's tape, you're welcome to apply painter's tape on both sides of the post. I did not do that, but it is something that you have the option to do to help make things easier. And I am using varying amounts of white and brown, full width strokes in the center of the post, but using the tip of the brush to outline the edge of the post. So right here on the right, we have that kind of 3D edge to it. I'm going to add more dark on the right by adding more brown onto my brush and less white. In the center, it ended up being a little bit lighter. So we're just using brown and white, gently blending those together using full width strokes. And notice how I am painting over some of the edges of the arrows and that's okay because we will be painting over that portion after this brown dries. So full width strokes, blending the brown and the white together and leaving it, there's a lot of streaks left in there and that creates the fake wood effect. Next, we will paint the signs and you wanna go ahead and rinse your 12 bright off. You do not need to wait for that post to dry before doing this step. So rinse, kind of dry the brush, although you can still have a little bit of water on your brush, that's okay. Grab your titanium white and let's paint the signs. So each of the signs are going to be painted white with a little bit of brown in there. These are going to be colored signs, but we're gonna make them look a little bit like a very, very light wood color as if they were painted like white first and then the color added. That's gonna help create that rustic effect in the colors of the signs. So basically, if we end up dragging a little brown into this from the post that isn't dry, that is okay. So I'm using, still using the 12 bright brush using the full width of the brush to fill in solid that sign shape using the tip of the brush on the edge it really helps to define the edging 
of the sign. But see, I have a little bit of brown kind of streaking in there and that is okay. In fact, I am going to on purpose add some brown in there. I took brown on the tip of the brush and I did on the right edge of this one. I did outline and on the bottom, another outline and in the bottom right here, another outline. Just by outlining the right side and bottom, we created this effect that it's starting to take some form, look a little bit 3D. And we're gonna do the same thing again. So without rinsing the brush, if there's too much brown on it, so if this is turning like the same shade of brown as the post, you wanna wipe your brush off and add more white to it. This needs to be a much lighter color than the post. If it's not a lighter color, you wanna get it to be lighter, especially if you're gonna add color to these signs. If you wanna change the design of this, if you wanna make them all dark and the post light, you're welcome to do that. So just painting the arrow in using the same technique with the white. There's little bits of brown that are dragging in there and that's okay. So again, if you wanted to use painter's tape for these, you can. I found that the imperfection of these signs actually gave it a little bit more character since this is taking place on a farm at a pumpkin patch. We want to make these signs look kind of imperfect, rustic. So I did the same thing to this one using the brown in the tip of the brush. I outlined the bottom edge and the bottom edge of the arrow and that gives it a little bit of a three-dimensional look. And I'm just gonna repeat this technique for each of the signs. I'm gonna wipe this brush off to make sure there's not too much brown on that. So when I go to this next sign, it's okay if there's a little bit of brown in that white because that's kind of the effect we were going for, a very, very light wood color that's kind of a washed like if you whitewashed over the piece of wood, it wouldn't be pure white. You'd still see a little bit of brown in it. And then we're just gonna repeat the same technique. So for the triangle of the arrow, it helps to outline using the tip of the brush to outline the triangle and then fill it in using the width of the brush at an angle. And then the rectangle piece, again, outlining, use the tip of the brush and then use the full width of the brush to fill in the shape. So you wanna make your strokes go in the direction of that shape. So the direction of the wood grain would be going horizontally. The very top sign is painted also white. Could do the 3D part of this one before I forget, using the brown on the tip of the brush. Same thing, just on the bottom and on one side to create that three dimensional effect. And then we'll go back and finish this top guy.
and then we'll take our brown and add brown on the right and at the bottom. Next, I am going to add some shadowing on our post, specifically underneath each of the signs. So I'm gonna load Mars Black onto my palette and grab my 12 bright brush. You'll need a soft cloth handy because we are gonna do this dry brush style. Basically, using your 12 bright brush, load the tip of the brush in the black and then wipe the brush off. This is going to allow only a small amount of paint to be left on your paintbrush. And then underneath each of your signs, we're just going to drag the black downwards. That's going to create the effect of a shadow underneath the sign that's kind of casting a shadow on the post, just making that area a little bit darker. And it doesn't have to be consistent. You can even use the tip of the brush to kind of drag down to the sides of the post. Help make that a little bit darker. So every time you load, you want to wipe the brush off and use the width of the brush. I'm going to do this at the top too, just dragging that down. So the ones that are at an angle, you want to still make sure that you're dragging your paint in a vertical direction. Next, I'm going to rinse the 12 bright brush off, set that to the side, and I'll be using the one inch flat brush again to paint the hill. Let's load our palette with the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and turn my canvas vertically so you can kind of see how that looks and get my one inch flat brush ready. Load that into the green. And basically, we're just going to paint the hill. So we're doing curved strokes, full width curved strokes. We're going to have to go around that post. So when you get to the edges of the post, you want to kind of paint around it. Also, add some titanium white to your brush. This is going to allow your hill to be lighter in color in the back, darker at the bottom. So you just want to kind of blend lighter color in the back and add a little bit more of the pure green towards the bottom. This is the first layer of the hill. We will be painting a grass layer over this. We'll be adding gra grass texture to it. I'm going to be doing the grass texture next and you do not need to wait for this to dry to do this step. So we are going to add some more Hooker's Green Hue Permanent to our palette and Primary Yellow. That Primary Yellow is going to lighten the grass color so that it will stand out. Let's start by mixing yellow and green together. About equal amounts, yellow and green. And I'm using the 12 Bright Brush. I'm gonna start by dragging my brush up and over that hill line. So I'm taking these, this brush, doing these kind of dragging strokes to create grass that goes over the hill line. So I did that on both sides. And I'm gonna do this row by row. So sometimes I can use the tip of the brush to create thinner grass blades. Sometimes I can use the width of the brush to create thicker grass blades. See how they're going in opposite directions along the hill? They're swaying to the right on the right side and swaying to the left on the left side. And there's some grass blades that are overlapping the bottom of the post. So I did my first row, and then we do my second row. I wiped my brush off. This time I just grabbed green and not the yellow. So I'm taking the tip of the brush and I'm doing strokes with that darker green. They're swaying towards mostly towards the right on the right side and mostly towards the left on the left side. As I work my way down to the bottom of this hill, my grass blades are actually getting taller. I went back here and I did more kind of taller grass blades 
in the back. So we can add more in the back if we need. But pretty much our goal is to keep working our way down row by row. And by doing that row by row and then working your way from the top to the bottom so each row overlaps the previous row, that's going to give your grass some depth. Next, we are going to rinse our 12 bright brush off and add color to our palette. So these are the colors that I used for my signs. You can customize your colors if you want. I did cad orange hue, light pink, deep violet, and primary yellow for my signs. So I'm, so I'm going to load my palette with each of those colors. Let's rinse our 12 bright brush off and start with our first color. So my top sign is going to be orange and you'll need your soft cloth handy because we are dry brushing these colors onto our wood. So imagine these are actually pieces of wood and we want to dry brush our paint color onto them. So we kind of treat it that way. Um, with this orange one, I'm actually using orange and yellow just for color variation. But again, this is the 12 bright brush. I'm doing full width strokes. I am not trying to cover all the white 100% because I want it to look rustic. I'm using orange and yellow. I'm doing full width strokes. Um, I'm not wiping my brush off every time. Also, you can grab some more titanium white and kind of blend that in there. I'm using the tip of the brush to outline the edges of the sign. So then I'm going to go to my next color and repeat this exact same technique only with a different color. So I'm going to rinse, dry, and then for the next sign I will be using light pink. So load my brush into light pink, left and right strokes. Again, not covering that white fully 100% and if I need to I can add more titanium white onto this to give it more of a kind of a two-tone fake wood look. Um, some of this brown of the signs has not dried all the way, so I am getting like streaks of brown dragged in there, and I kind of like that. I can even like intentionally grab a little bit of brown on my brush and let that brown kind of blend with the color too to give it more of that wood look. And again, I am grabbing little bits of titanium white and letting that blend in with the color as well. Next, I'm going to do purple. So this is deep violet, left and right strokes, but not covering that white all the way. And if needed, add some more titanium white in there. Thank you. 
my bottom sign is done with yellow and same exact technique, left and right strokes, adding bits of titanium white in there. And we are going to rinse the brush and dry. And I'm going to do some brown shadowing on my sign. So this is optional. You can decide if you like this or not. I'm taking my brown and I'm dry brushing along some of the edges, specifically the right edges of each of the signs and kind of dragging that into the paint color. Gives it kind of a shadowy, Helps bring out some of that fake wood texture. On this one, I'm gonna add it to the left side of this arrow sign. and on to the right side of this sign. Then let's rinse our brush and dry. I'm gonna grab some titanium white and I wanna outline the tops of the signs, specifically the top edges. So I did the top of that one, the top of this one, and the top edge of the purple and yellow sign. If you have leftover pencil marks, you are welcome to erase them at any point. Just make sure that you're careful around any of the paint that might still be wet. Pencil will erase off of canvas as long as it's not painted over. So I'm gonna erase all of that. And I'm going to paint the pumpkins next. So I did three pumpkins on the base of the sign and I used a number four round brush. So I'm gonna start by painting my pumpkins white just because we have kind of a darker background and if we went straight to orange, it would be too see-through. So we gotta do white first. And here's how I like to do pumpkins. I like to start with the center oval and paint a white oval shape. This is a number four round brush in titanium white, by the way. And then after the center oval is painted, I do two curved shapes curving downwards. So we do that on each side of that oval and then I'm going to do another set. So this set is actually a little bit shorter than that other set. So just stroking downwards and you create the pumpkin bumps to create that pumpkin shape. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna do a taller pumpkin and start with a taller, a tall skinny oval. So there's my center oval shape. And then I'm gonna do curve on each side of that. So I'm just kind of pressing firm with my brush, curving downwards, stroking up and down, but going in a curved direction. So each little pumpkin bump. So I made that one a little bit wider. I'm going to do another set. So this set right here, curve and then curve. So it creates that little curve at the top and the bottom of the pumpkin. Curving downwards, so you get those little bumps at the top and you get the little bumps on the bottom. So this one does overlap our fence post a little bit. And if your pumpkin is kind of misshaped, that's okay. Pumpkins do come in different kinds of shapes and sometimes they're lumpy, sometimes they're tall, sometimes they're short. 
So I'm going to do this again, but with orange. So we don't need to wait for that white to dry all the way. In fact, it kind of helps us that the white is not. So if that white blends with our orange, that's okay. But I'm basically redoing what I just painted with the white, but I'm doing it with the orange. So again, starting in the center oval and then going to each one and curving downwards. And when you curve down for each of the pumpkin bumps, I'm leaving a little slither of that white kind of still showing through that helps us with that division of each of the pumpkin bumps. So I'm going to repeat this again for the next pumpkin. This time I'm going to add some yellow into it to let this be kind of a, a kind of a yellow orange. So I'm going to load my brush in the yellow and the orange. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with the center pumpkin, the center oval. I'm going to let that yellow and orange blend together to paint an oval. And then curved stroke, starting from the top and curving down. Starting from the top, curving down. Using that yellow and orange, curving downwards. You can stroke upwards and downwards, but you gotta do that curved direction. I'm going to create another smaller pumpkin to the right of our large pumpkin and use the same steps, starting with the white and the round brush. Create your center oval, and then do your little curved strokes on each side. And then after you do the first layer white, you can grab your orange or your orange and yellow and go over each of the curved strokes in your center oval. Next, I'm going to paint the stems of the pumpkins. I'm going to rinse the brush, dry it, and use the color raw umber to paint the stems. I'm gonna load some, load some raw umber onto my palette and use the tip of the brush to grab a little bit of that brown. And then we're gonna just be very simple about this. I'm gonna do the stems on the top of each of the pumpkins. So we can start out with a very wide sort of base and just kind of curl that stem. So see the bottom of the stem kind of rests on the very top and then it goes very thin and then it can curl. And then this one as well. It's got kind of like a scalloped base to it. It rests on the top bumps of the pumpkin. You can curve your stroke. I like to add a little highlight into my stem. So I grabbed a teeny tiny amount of white and just kind of like do a few like white strokes into that brown and let that dry. Then I'm going to rinse my round brush off and use the brown to kind of paint some of the lines in between the pumpkin bumps. I'm not going to outline the entire oval and curved shape, just on the top and just on the bottom. I'm just going to kind of drag my brush downwards towards the top, on the top of the pumpkin and on the bottom, just using the brown. This kind of helps to outline that a little bit. I'm going to add maybe a little bit more color to this pumpkin with the orange, with that just stroking downwards, maybe a little bit of white. You just don't want to overdo it. So if you keep adding more layers, it's just going to kind of like mesh together. So you want to kind of leave it alone. <laughs> but I did add a little bit of orange and light in there to kind of make that one stand out a little bit better. I'm using the Hooker's Green Hue Permanent next with the number four round brush. I'm going to do the little vines, pumpkin vines, kind of waving and curling behind each of the pumpkins. This is not supposed to look super realistic at all. So I did like a curly line behind each 
And then I'm taking my green and I'm forming these pumpkin leaves. I'm just kind of like dragging my brush outward. So I do like the center part of the stem and just drag outward to create a pumpkin leaf shape. And then if we want to, we can take our green and do little green grass strokes that are overlapping our pumpkins. This will make it look like our pumpkins are more nestled into the grass. And so basically just taking that green, using the round brush and doing little tiny grass strokes that overlap the bottom of each of the pumpkins. The next thing I'm going to do is draw the cute little black bird that's sitting on the very top sign. I'm gonna use a pencil to draw him out first and then I'll paint him in. So I'm gonna do like an oval shape. And then on top of that oval shape, so like almost like an egg shape. The bottom part's kind of cut off because he's gonna be sitting on that fence or the, the sign. And then I'm gonna do a circle above that oval shape and then erase part of the circle so erase that center part and then we can do a triangle for his beak two little eyes we can do little teardrop shapes for the feathers and the wings like a curved line going downwards on each side I'm going to kind of adjust this so it's more going outwards and then back inwards Go out and then it goes back down and then we can do this little feet that are overlapping the sign so once we have them all jawed in we can use a number four round brush in the color Mars black to paint the bird in so I'm going to take my round and the black and paint the circle so i'm going to go over the beak but we can always paint that back in and then do the body solid black so that gets painted in solid black i'm going to use titanium white to kind of lighten up some of this color so without rinsing the brush grab white I'm going to do the wings, kind of a lighter color so that they'll stand out. Dragging that downwards and let it stand out by adding white into that black so it makes kind of a dark gray color. Kind of blend in some of that white kind of all throughout. Pretty much the body is pure black, the head black. We can do little the little feathers and just kind of dragging that outwards. Maybe a little bit of white underneath the head. Just going back over this wing, that lighter color. And so we want we want this to dry before we do our beak. I'm going to do his feet next with orange and yellow. So this might be tricky because it's the same color as the sign. So I'm actually going back with white, making it lighter. If you need to, you can make yours darker to help it stand out or lighter, or you can use like a dark gray for the his talons, his feet. So when this dries, you can take your titanium white and paint your beak. So that beak is going to be orange, but I want to paint it white first so that it will be nice and bright. And I use my titanium white to paint two little dots for the eyes. It helps to twist your brush that gets the paint right there on the tip of the brush. 
So when those two white dots dry, I do, I'm going to do like a little tiny black dot in the center. So when that beak is dry, we can take our orange and go back over that, paint that solid orange. In this next step, we will do, be doing the lettering on the signs. And I recommend, at least for the first sign, that you write it out in pencil first, so, just so you get the placement of the lettering. And then you could always erase pencil that's showing through. I'm gonna go ahead and write pumpkin patch in cursive. You're welcome to change the font or the style of the lettering. And I'm using a Posca paint pen, specifically the black one, to write out my letters. So this one is going to say pumpkin patch. If you want it to say, for example, a family name or welcome to family pumpkin patch. There's a lot of creative things that you can do with this one. This next sign is going to say hay rides. I'm not gonna write this out in pencil first. I'm just going to do it in pen. This next one is going to say apple cider. I was kind of disappointed in this one because the black did not provide a lot of contrast because the sign itself is dark. The white paint pen the Posca one doesn't work that great, so I just left it black. But if you have a really good white paint pen, you can use that or just use like a brush and white paint. And then I did corn maze. So I didn't like how the lettering of this one worked. I want to show you that you can erase these. So this is marker. It will be permanent, but if you write it out and decide you don't like it, you can actually, before it dries all the way, this is just a regular baby wipe. It wipes right off. So if you make a mistake with your lettering, get a baby wipe and gently lift it off. Again, this is only if your paint pen has not dried all the way. So once it dries all the way, I'm pretty sure it's not coming off. So now we can change this. So I changed this to non-cursive writing. And this one says corn maze. And then after your paint pen dries, if there's any leftover pencil marks from writing it out in pencil first, you can erase that. I'm gonna erase any pencil marks that are left from the bird. And then I'm gonna take my black paint pen and do a little texture on the post. So I'm gonna do a few little like knots in the wood and a little vertical lines kind of here and there throughout the post. This, it's going to give that a little more texture. And the last final detail I'm going to do to this is paint fall leaves kind of all throughout the painting. I'm going to use the number four round brush. And a little bit of water into this orange, kind of twist my brush. And I'll be using yellow and orange, just very basic leaf shapes. If you want to get more detailed, I suppose you can do like maple leaf shapes. Most of these are just rounded and pointed leaves. And I can add more yellow to this to kind of get some variation in color. There's no red on my palette, but I could use red. So this leaf, I'm just kind of dragging it out. This is kind of like the pumpkin leaf that I did earlier. So you can just kind of drag it outwards to create some like little prongs on the leaf, make it a different shape. I'm just doing these, making them go in different directions, kind of all throughout the background.
and we can do some leaves on the ground as well. You might find that the leaves aren't showing up on the grass because orange and yellow are not a very opaque color. So if you want your leaves to look brighter, you can add a little bit of white into them so that they'll show up against the darker green grass. Then I'll do all the stems of the leaf. So I'm gonna rinse dry. I'm gonna pinch my bristles a little bit here because I know I'm doing a thin line grabbing. You can do either black or brown. I'm just doing a little tiny line, kind of curving in different directions. It's going to make like make it look like your leaves are falling in different directions. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint pumpkin patch signs. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.